These are the Russian prisoners of war who were released by Ukraine as part of the swap of POWs which took place on September 21st. And here are the Ukrainian servicemen who returned home. They are exhausted and sick. Marine with the call sign pianist Mikhail Dianov, the defender of Azovstal, was changed beyond recognition by Russian captivity. This is how Dmitro Kozatsky, who also fought for the Ukrainian Mariupol, looks like for now. This is how the physical form of the head of the National Police of Mariupol, with the call sign Kat Mikhail Vershinin, has changed. The contrast of being in captivity by Ukrainians and Russians is obvious. Everyone is in a different condition. It is true. There are those who are in a normal condition, except for chronic malnutrition related to the conditions of detention. There are also those who have been tortured. And the percentage of such people among those whom we have returned is very high. On September 23rd, the Ukrainian law enforcement officers found the 18th place for torture, which was equipped by the Russian army on the temporarily occupied territories of the Kharkiv region. Tortures with electricity, beatings and rapes. According to the security service of Ukraine, more than a thousand Russian soldiers who committed crimes there have been identified. It was in this basement where the locals were held. At first they were psychologically broken down at the railway station, and then, when it was necessary to get a testimony, they were brought here. New mass graves have been found in the liberated Izum. Yevhen Yenin, first deputy minister of internal affairs, says that exhumation will begin there in the coming days. On September 23rd, the Office of Prosecutor General of Ukraine announced the completion of the exhumation at the site of the first burial in Izum. There are 425 civilians, five children and 22 military personnel of the armed forces of Ukraine. 90% of people were killed with violence. Most of them were women, five children. In some burials, we found several bodies in a one grave. According to the information we have, it was a family. We found people with the signs of torture, with broken arms, some with their male genitals turned off. The Russian military is turning Ukrainian settlements into ruins. Gennady Lysenko is 58. The Russian invaders lived in his house in the village of Kamyanka. This is all that's left. There are only 10 people remaining out of 1,200 residents of the village. I was the first to find out where we could go. Anyway, I've got children, grandchildren. They are underage. The search for the bodies of people under the rubble, left there by the Russian army shelling, continues in the Kharkiv region. The rescue dogs have given us some indications of where the bodies might be. We are checking them out, and then the soldiers will go through the rubble and see if there are any remains. Almost 1,500 Ukrainians have been killed by the Russian invaders in the Kyiv region, according to the National Police of Ukraine. There is an unknown number of civilians who have been killed in Mariupol, which is temporarily occupied by the Russian army. According to the Ukrainian city authorities, the death toll may exceed 80,000 based on the data of the Ilichivsk MOK. Missile attacks on the civilian objects in majority of the cities of Ukraine. All this is nothing but the genocide of the Ukrainian people. The key difference between genocide and other crimes is that genocide is committed with special intent the so-called genocidal intent. It consists of the desire to destroy partially or completely one of the four groups that are protected by the Genocide Convention. These are a racial group, a religious group, a national group and an ethnic group. If we are talking about Ukrainians and those who have Ukrainian citizenship, this is a national group, as defined in the practice of international courts. The Office of Prosecutor General says that nine Russian soldiers have already been convicted for their crimes in Ukraine. During the six months of the war, public activists and investigative journalists of Ukraine have identified about 30,000 Russian soldiers who were suspected of committing the crimes. In addition to the Ukrainian public, partner countries are helping Kyiv in investigation. Last Friday, the Commission of Inquiry in Ukraine presented its evidence to the United Nations Human Rights Council. Russia's war crimes in Ukraine have been documented. We will do everything necessary to ensure accountability for these crimes. Luc Pierre Devigne, Deputy Managing Director for Eastern Europe and Central Asia at European External Action Service, during hearings at the Foreign Affairs Committee of the European Parliament. The Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights has increased its presence in Ukraine. The UN has documented 5,996 deaths of Ukrainian civilians. Nearly 9,000 people have been wounded, according to the organization. 
there are 382 children among the killed. The head of the monitoring mission, Matilda Bogna, says that these are only the confirmed incidents. The real numbers are much higher. Reported by Diana Kolesnik, Yulia Bazborotko, UATV News.